things or is that a ring? You're not seeing things. Is it pretty? Oh, I should have known. Your eyes are bright. Your cheeks are flushed. Oh, I should have known. <laughs> congratulations, dear. Honey, congratulate the United States mail. Oh, I will. I will. What's his name? The mail I mean is spelled M-A-I-L. Oh. This ring belonged to my grandmother. My aunt sent it to me. Can you see the diamond? Oh, yes. Yes, it's lovely. I think it's pretty dirty. Scrub it with ammonia. Ammonia? Oh, is that how you keep all your diamonds looking like you, Miss Patsy? <laughs> oh, my diamonds. Well, thank you for the compliment. Oh, here's the five dollars I borrowed from you to eat on last week. Oh, thanks. Now I can eat this week. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Excuse it, chick. The boss around? Well, hello there. What can I do for you? You the boss? Well, I got an in. What do you want to see him about? The hottest shoe shine in town. Yeah? Yeah. You wouldn't snow me, would you, Miss? <laughs> Blondie, I slap a shine on that's so shiny, I gotta work with blinkers on. No kidding. <laughs> okay, you just park it here. I'll see if he's in the market. <laughs> Oh, uh, whom, shall I say, has come to shine? Huh? Your name, your moniker, you know, your handle. Um, uh, Smith. John Smith. Oh, that's a nice name. Familiar, too. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Smith, how did you get in the building? Oh, uh, I got in, too. I'll bet you have. <laughs> Mr. Sands. There's a wonderful little character outside who wants to give you, and I quote, the hottest shoe shine in town. I've already had a shine this morning, Susie. Oh, I know that, but you ought to see him. He's so cute, and he might just grow up to be another Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Send him in. Uh, <clears throat> sir? Peter Sands, John Smith. It certainly is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Sands. Well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Smith. Uh, Miss McNamara tells me that you are peddling the hottest shoe shine in town, but as you can see, I don't really need one. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's how the ball bounces. Uh, uh. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Oh, gosh. Gee whiz, I'm sorry. Now look what a mess I've made out of your pretty shine. Yes. You really create a market for yourself, don't you? Oh, I hope you don't think I did that on purpose. It's just that I'm nearsighted. See? And there's no money for glasses. I ruined your shine, so I'm going to reshine your shoes. Twice as good as they were. With no cost at all to you. Completely gratis. I don't want you to even think of paying me. Even if I am just a poor orphan and I live in the run-down section of the slums. No, sir. This shine is on me. Kids up for an Academy Award. You have to look through six butcher shops to find that much. <laughs> there you are, sir. All done. And on the house. Thank you. And don't feel the least bit bad. I'm just a poor orphan who hasn't any... All right already. Here's 50 cents. Thank you and goodbye. You are a fine man, Mr. Sands. Thank you for everyone in my poor, miserable family. Yes, well, come on, little Eva. We better cross the ice before the bloodhounds catch us. A shame, Miss All right, all right. I'd love to shine. There's not very much to shine, is there? It'll still cost you half a buck. Well, gee, they're mostly imagination. <laughs> How about a quarter? Hey, you drive a hard bargain, lady. Okay, 30 cents a day. Good. I'll give you 20. Okay, okay, I'll take the quarter. You do a good job and I'll give you a bonus. Excuse me. Right now. Good. 
You didn't happen to see a $5 bill lolling around the office, did you? A $5 bill? Yeah, a $5 bill. No, I haven't seen a $5 bill. A poor little boy like me doesn't see big money like that. Are you sure you haven't seen that money? Why, no, ma'am. But I'll notify if I do. Special delivery. Yeah. <laughs> you do that. And remember, a $5 bill looks just like this. Well, I wonder how that got there. No matter. The important thing is you got it back. Mm-hmm. Lady, look, you don't think that I... Well, you couldn't have... Why'd you take this? Well, things is awful bad at our house. Everybody's sick and... Yes, and if you don't have the operation, you'll never be able to play the violin again. I wouldn't have to tell you that part of it. All right, you can have the five dollars. Oh, thank you, kind lady. But you're going to work for it. What? W-O-R-K. Now, let me see. At 25 cents a shine for five dollars, that would be 20 shines. No, really, 19. And when you leave, you can give Miss Praskins a shine, so that'll make 18 shines you owe me. What are you giving me? I'm not giving you anything. I work much too hard for my money to give it away. I am buying 20 shines for $5. You mean you ain't gonna call the cops? And all I gotta do is shine the mouse's shoes in the next room? All right. Now, the mouse and I will see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah, sure. Sure thing, tomorrow. Eh... Uh, Remember, tomorrow. Just like you said, tomorrow. Shall we say about 3.30? Well, wait a minute, now let me see. I get out of school at 3, takes about 15 minutes to get over here from Bleecker Street. Yeah, let's say 3.30. All right. See you then. Okay, Mouse, up with the tootsies. The crazy blonde in the next office is treating you to a shine. <laughs> Well, what time is it? It's a quarter to five. Susie, I gave you credit for having more sense. Imagine giving that little thug money in advance. Now he'll be here. My grandmother always said, put your trust in people and they'll be trustworthy. And she didn't mean some of the people some of the time. Well, it's your five dollars, but I didn't know you had them to throw around. Maybe I pay you too much. He'll be here. <laughs> Susie, maybe Mr. Sands is right. I'll, I'll split the loss with you. After all, it was my fault, too. I should never have paid you back the five dollars so fast. Bye. <laughs> there isn't going to be any loss. If trust worked for Grandma McNamara, it's going to work for me. Hello, police department. I would like to speak to someone who's familiar with the Bleecker Street District, please. Sergeant O'Halloran. Oh, this is Susan Camille McNamara. McNamara, you say? Not Seamus McNamara's kin from County Cork. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, Sergeant. Of course, you couldn't be one of Seamus' children. They're all boys. <laughs> yes, well, I guess that lets me out. All of us O'Halloran's were boys, too. <laughs> well, how nice for your wives. Now, Sergeant, I... Oh, I'm not married. I'm six foot tall, 35 years old, and all my uniforms are paid for. Well, thank you very much for your credit rating, Sergeant. Now, I would like to uh, uh, locate a friend of mine. He lives, I think, in the Bleecker Street district. Bleecker Street? Susan Camille, you've come to the right man. I know every living soul on Bleecker Street. And most of the departed. Oh, good. Well, now, my friend is uh, a young man about 10 years old. He's, uh, he's brunette, and he has dark brown eyes. The Little Caesar of Bleecker Street. The little Caesar of Bleecker Street? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Chucky Wills. Well, what are you missing, ma'am? Chucky? Uh, I mean, uh, no. Uh, uh, no, nothing really, Sergeant. Oh, come now, ma'am. Chucky has quite a record for a ten-year-old. To know Chucky is to lose your teeth. Oh, well, my teeth are quite secure. I wonder if you could tell me where he lives. Well, I... I don't know the address exactly. But I could take you there. You know, Susan Camille, you have a very sweet voice. 
A lark in your throat, me blessed mother used to say. A lark, did you say? <laughs> but thank you, Sergeant. And you'll take me there. But thank you very much. I'll fly over in about a half an hour. You'll be able to recognize me. I'm six foot tall, curly brown hair, and I'll be in my uniform. Well, I'm a blonde, five foot two, and my shoes need a shine. Oh. Well, bring them along. The minute I heard your voice on the phone, I said to myself, I said, she has to be a lovely lass. And then when I saw you, well, to coin an American phrase, Gives me the creeps. Well, it's no place for the likes of you. You know, tonight's my night for the squad car. Why don't we take a little spin? What a terrible place for a ten-year-old to live. You'd think his parents could find a better place to live. Well, we'd have to find his parents first. Did you know it's only two weeks till the policeman's ball? What do you mean? I mean, will you go with me, Susan Camille? No, no, I mean about his parents. Where are they? Well, there's no record of his father. His mother up and left him a couple of years ago. He lives here with his aunt and uncle. Oh, poor little guy. Yes, he has had it tough. But with the way he's behaving, he's only making it tougher on himself. Yeah. This is it. Well, well, thank you, Sergeant. You've been very nice. And you've been very cruel. Cruel? When a gentleman asks a lady to attend the policeman's ball, the gentleman expects an answer. Well, when a lady is about to tussle with a little Caesar of Bleecker Street, the lady doesn't know what to answer because she doesn't know how long she's going to be around. You're not going in there alone. There's a lot of man here, and it's here to protect you. Oh, I know that, Sergeant. <laughs> but you just run along and clean up the city. And I'll be happy to go to the policeman's ball with you, if I come out with all my teeth. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to be all right now, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hello there. Well, Miss McNamara, this is a surprise. I was just on my way uptown. Now, if you'll just excuse me. While you make an exit out of the back door. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's get down to it. You want your five bucks. Oh, I ain't got your five bucks. So sue me. So, my shoes. Look, you don't get it. I don't polish shoes. I use that gag to get into places and size them up. I polish your shoes, you turn around or leave the room like yesterday, and I cop your five bucks. You don't get it. I want my shoes polished. Now look. Now you look. You advertise the hottest shoe shine in town. <laughs> well, let's see it, Buster, or I'll turn you into the better business people. Very <laughs> funny. I thought so. Okay. Shine, Caesar, shine. You think you're so smart. I know I'm smart. You'd be smart, too, if you'd wise up. Look, I'm shining your shoes, but skip the sermon. I don't want to hear it. Oh, that's the way you want it? That's the way I want it. Okay. Okay. But I wasn't going to give you a sermon. I was just going to tell you that a smart, honest man could make a lot more than a crooked crook. But then you wouldn't be interested. I wouldn't. No, I didn't think so. Forget about it, then. It's forgotten. What do you mean, a smart, honest man? I thought you weren't interested. I'm not. What do you mean? Well, I mean that a crook got five dollars from me yesterday, and he's not going to get any more. But a smart, honest man could get that five dollars and many more by shining shoes for me and the rest of the people in the building. And he wouldn't have to worry about somebody taking the money away from him. And he wouldn't have to sit in this dark room worrying about the next knock on the door might be a policeman ready to take him to the reform school. But then, you don't want to hear about that. Nah. Uh. <laughs> you know, I think you could make about, um, 20 bucks a week in that job. 20 bucks? Yeah. And if you got too many customers to handle, you could hire some of your buddies to work for you. Yeah. Yeah. I could cut some of the guys in. Not for too much. You know something? For a dame, you're a pretty nice dame. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? That's one of the nicest compliments I ever had. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll case the building tomorrow. For new customers, that is. Yeah, well, don't forget your paid-up customer. Forget you? How can I? You tang me like a spook. 
I'd have to leave town to get away from you. It'll be easier to shine your old shoes. Yeah, well, now you're learning something. And I'll be a walking advertisement for you. Okay, Buster. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, well, I mean tomorrow. <laughs> You took care of everyone on the ninth floor? Yeah, and Spook is polishing up the tent. Okay. Go get Spook and the two of you take the second and third. I'll check with you later. Okay. Oh, hi, Herbie. Hi. Hi, Miss McNamara. Hi, Tessie. Well, I finally remembered to get the ammonia. Now, if I can stand the fumes and find the diamonds, I'll polish it up. I'll do it for you, Susie. I kind of like the smell of ammonia. Oh, you got yourself a job. And speaking of jobs, young man, I hear you're doing such a good one that dark glasses are a must in this building. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody's very pleased, Chucky, including your first customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I thought you were going to be a walking ad for me. Some ad with your shoes looking like that. Come on, Miss McNamara, I'll slap a shine on him. Okay, you do that. And you slap a shine on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how's it going, Chucky? I'll sure to go. Well, let me rephrase that question. How does it feel? How should it feel? Ah, it feels. <laughs> you know, it's the kind of feeling I ain't never had before. When I walk down the street, I ain't looking for alleys to duck into. I just walk. Know what I mean? Yeah, it feels good. It looks good on you, too. Hey, what happened? How'd you do it? Oh, I didn't do it. You did it. You know, if you don't trust people, Chucky, you don't trust yourself either. You had a choice to make, and you made the right one. I bet my mother looks something like you. Oh, Chucky. <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> You tell anybody what you saw and I'll break every bone in your head. I didn't see nothing. That's more like it. And what'd you come in here for anyway? I just wanted to tell you, you better come talk to Spook. What's wrong with him? I think he's holding out on us. Hermie, you gotta learn to trust people more. Trust Spook? Hermie, when you don't trust other people, it's because you don't trust yourself. Now, in your case, I don't blame you much, but you gotta fight it like crazy. See you later, Miss McNamara. Okay. Thank you, Grandmother McNamara. Well, she was a smart woman, Susie. He's changed so. <laughs> oh, come into my office. I have a surprise for you. Oh, you do? But first, you must close your eyes. Oh, fine. Come on, now. Oh, fine. I kiss her still. Well, you're going to feel so glamorous. Now, you just keep your eyes closed and wait until I slip it on your... till I slip it on your... Oh, dear. Well, I won't fit my old dear. You better slip it on my finger. Oh, Susie. Susie, it's, it's gone. I, I left it right here, and now it's, it's gone. Oh, no, it isn't. It has to be here someplace. Well, I just finished cleaning it when I came into your office. Oh, oh, Susie, I'm so sorry. Now, don't get excited by that diamond is much too small to take off by itself. Someone could have helped it along. Bye, don't say that. All right, I won't say it. But you know who that someone could be that I won't mention. No, I don't, and neither do you. No. It, it could have fallen off down here on, under the desk. Where's Susie? I'm under here. She lost her ring. Or rather, I lost it, for I left it right here on my desk, and when I came back, it was gone. Chucky. Now, stop it, both of you, accusing that poor boy. In the first place, we don't even know if the ring was stolen. And in the second place, anyone could have come in the room while Vi was out of it. I admire your faith, Susie. And the ring is yours, as was the five dollars, to do with as you please. But the next item missing might be mine or Vi's. I can't have that. All right. I've got to know who did this. All right, Mr. Sands. I'll ask Chuck if he knows anything about it. And if you don't get an answer, then I will take steps. All step. right, I'll ask him. And whatever he says, we're going to believe because he'll tell the truth. No, I don't know a thing about it. I didn't even see the ring. But you knew it was there. 
Well, I heard them talking about Miss Praskin shining it out, but I didn't pay any attention. And that's the truth. When you were in the room, was the other boy there all the time? No, he went on ahead of me. I had some work to do. Yeah, I'll bet you did. Mr. Sands. Chucky, you, you say you were in the room alone? Yes. Well, honey, now that ring has been in my family for years. It belonged to my grandmother. You think I took it? Well, no, I don't think you... You do. All that talk was just so much guff. You think I took it. You don't trust me. You don't trust me at all. Well, think what you want to think. You will anyway. But, but just for the record, I didn't take it. Susie, you mustn't let this affect you so. You, you tried, you tried very hard, but this boy is just an impossible case. This... It, Susie, Mr. Sands! What is it, Bob? I, I, Susie! Oh, the ring! Oh, I had it on my finger all the time! Oh, dear. I didn't know it until just now when I started to die. Oh, thank heavens. Well, anyway. Oh, Mr. Sands, what have we done to that boy? We've given him a pretty rough time, I'm afraid. And I'm also afraid that I am mostly to blame. No, we're all to blame. Now, what are we going to do about it? Hmm? Tell him we're sorry, I guess. Vi, see if you can get him on the phone. No, no, that won't do. Well, what? We can't just order a humble pie and eat it. But we could go down to Bleecker Street in person and say we're sorry. Susie, could I please go with you? Oh, well, no, honey. There's someone has to stay here to hold down the fort, but I'll tell him that you wanted to come. Well, come on, Mr. Sands. Well, Susie, we've got work to do. I don't Yes, think we... you bet we have. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get lost, will you? Chucky. If I had your lousy ring, I'd give it to you just to get you off my back. Chucky. You got a Wait. search warrant, Mac? Chucky, we want to come in and see you. Honey, we found the ring. Well, three cheers for you. And we want to tell you how sorry we are. Okay, you've said it. <laughs> Forgive me for not serving tea. But I got a meeting of the gang and Charlie Seller. Now, wait a minute. You know, the first time I met you, you made a mistake and I forgave you. Can't you find it in your heart to forgive me? I promise you I'll never let you down again. Well... That goes for me too, Chucky. Well... 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 Well? Well, okay. <laughs> You're a big man, Chucky. And by the way, a big man shouldn't go around with his shoes looking like that. You sit right up here, and I will slap a shine on these the way my mother used to make. Oh, Mr. Sand. Hey, he's really going to do it. If the boys could only see me now. She's at the cops. Relax, Chucky. It's Miss McNamara I'm after. I called your office. The girl said I'd find you here. Oh, she's okay, Sergeant. I'll vouch for her. No, thank you. I know, Chucky, I know. Her only crime is being fatally attractive to Irish policemen. And her sentence is she's got to come to my house tonight for corned beef and carrots. My mother wants to meet you. Oh, well, I'd love to meet her. Let's go. But, Susie, you can't go now. We've got work to do at the office. Oh. Excuse me. My good man. And I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Do you have a license to shine shoes? No, I, shine shoes. <laughs> I didn't know you had that. Well, didn't you now? Section C, 532-689, shining shoes without a license. Three days in jail or a $500 fine. Plus an additional fine for resisting an officer in the line of his duty. Plus... Okay, okay, take her away. Just to speak. So long, Caesar. Oh, no, not Caesar anymore. This is the little sweetheart of Bleecker Street. That? This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put a little more elbow grease into that boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>